Welcome to Cameron Art Museum. I'm Miss Ann, I'm the director here, and this is your art museum. This magnificent treasure house belongs to you and all of our community, and it's where you are welcome to see great works of art and oftentimes to make artwork yourself right here. Um, we have exhibition galleries, exhibition wings, full of, full of truly important works, but also you can visit on our grounds. This is a nine and a half acre site. It's a Carolina Bay. It's a, it's a fairly swampy land. And we have important public sculptural works of art that you can see and visit anytime, day or night. For example, there's a lovely sculptural work by Mel Chen, a very important North Carolina artist working out of the mountains of North Carolina currently. And it features what you may think are two identical bronze sculptures of little girls. But when you look closely, there's one thing different about each of them. So we invite you to come and see what the difference is. That work of art is poetically entitled the structure of things given and held. Also, besides hundreds of artworks that you can see here, this is also sacred ground in that it's the, a very important site where men fought and men died at the very end of the American Civil War. And so we have what are called breastworks or revetments, which is really a great long trench that was dug and the fill dirt was created into a mound where the soldiers stood behind, propped their muskets and their cannon fire. And you can see where this revetment was, was built. It was a victory from the Union soldier's side and was fought entirely by 1,600 men right on the front lines that were serving in what was called the U.S. Colored Troops. So it led decisively to the fall of Wilmington and the end of the Civil War very shortly thereafter. So you can come and climb around on the revetments and learn about the history in a living, palpable way. Other public artworks that we have on the grounds are a giant 14-foot, that's more than a story high, a 14-foot whirligig, or as the artist Vala Simpson who created it, he called them windmills, and Wallace worked in World War II, a different war, fighting for the Allies, fighting for America, and in order for he and his men to wash their clothes, they were stationed on a, a very small island named Sapan, and Wallace figured out a way that all the men could wash their clothes by harnessing the power of the wind. I know wind power is more common to us now, but it was not so much in the 1940s. And when Wallace came home to North Carolina after the war ended, he kept making what he called windmills. He remained through his 90s fascinated by different ways to harness the wind. And also he used everything in his sculptures are what most of us would throw away. So you can see how he recycled metal parts to create this beautiful whirly gig. Also, we just installed a 17-foot sculpture, which is even higher than the whirly gig, and it's called Harmony. It's freestanding, so you could, that which means you can walk all the way around it, and it is featuring three contours that I hope you can see are really distilled images of a man, a very simplified image of a man and a woman and a child. You can visit a recreation of Minnie Evans' gatehouse on the grounds of Cameron Art Museum as well. Minnie Evans is Wilmington's most famous artist and she lived and worked here all of her life and well up in years, she had what she called visions from God, and she began to make these beautiful drawings and paintings that she said were as strange to her as they were to all of us. And many of those artworks were made working out of a little tiny shed 
where she worked as the gatekeeper at Airly Gardens, which is now belongs to all of us and is, is taken care of by New Hanover County. So come inside the gatehouse and the motion of your body entering this little tiny shed activates um, a device where you hear Minnie Evans talking about her life and you'll see reproductions of her artwork in the little gatehouse. And after that visit, come on in this bigger house, which is yours, Cameron Art Museum, and go into the galleries that are situated beneath the glass pyramids that you see on the exterior of the building. Welcome inside the museum. My name is Luke, I'm a docent here. That means I'm a tour guide. And I'm gonna take you inside to the Brown Wing one of our two wings where we have lots of different exhibitions that change all the time. So we're going to see a few artworks in the Brown Wing. Come on in. And now we're inside of the Eye Learns, one of my favorite exhibitions here at the museum. Let's take a look at this print, one of my favorites in the exhibition. What do you see? I'll tell you what I see. I see a lot of bouncing balloons everywhere, different colors, orange and blue and yellow, like colors on, uh, of Christmas lights, maybe on a Christmas tree, or balloons at a parade. They're going everywhere, this way and that, flowing and swirling and twirling. It looks like a lot of fun. It kind of makes me feel happy. That's why I like it. Now, whenever I look at an artwork, one thing I often do is I ask myself, what kind of music? would I play along with this artwork? So, if you had to pick a piece of music for this artwork, what would you pick? Would you pick something slow and sad? I know I wouldn't. I'd pick something that was joyous and happy and energetic. And I've got a guess as to what the artist might have picked out. The artist, Alexander Calder, he loved the circus. When he was a young man, he had an assignment where he went two weeks to just do drawings of a circus. And if you've been to a circus, you know how much fun they can be. And I bet maybe you've heard circus music before. And let me know what you think. Does this music fit with this artwork? How did you like the music? You can think of your own piece of music to go along with the artwork. All right, now we're gonna go take a look at another artwork and my friend Georgia is gonna introduce it to us. Hi, my name's Georgia and I'm one of the educators here at the Cameron Art Museum. I am in a different gallery inside the Brown Wing looking at different examples of printmaking and I've chosen to talk about Roy Lichtenstein and his artwork because he's one of my all-time favorites. Roy Lichtenstein was an important part of the pop art movement, that's P-O-P, -P, and pop stands for both popular culture and colors that pop. Roy Lichtenstein almost only used primary colors, as you can see displayed in the artworks behind me. He focused on red, blue, and yellow, and he also really liked bold, thick outlines. That was because he was often inspired by the work he found in comic strips and in comic books. He, along with Jasper Johns and Andy Warhol, created this art movement that kind of looked at artwork in a different way than it had ever been looked at before. Roy Lichtenstein liked to create artwork that was original to his design, but that looked as though it had been created in a print processing plant. For that reason, you'll notice that a lot of his designs are very simple and linear. And from one perspective, if you look at it from far away, it looks as though the colors are completely solid. But when you get closer up and you take a closer look at the artwork, you'll see that lots of his colors are actually created by a series of dots that are pretty close together. These are called Ben Day dots. 
And these dots are used in the printing process in order to create a tonal look for comic books and newspapers and different types of printing processes that needed to create the look of a solid color. And he would use these in his artworks. So if you look close up, you see the dots, but if you stand far away, you see something different. And that's a fun thing to do in an art museum in general, is to change up your perspective and how you look at the artwork. Now you can learn more about these artworks as well as several other in our collection by looking at our education resource page. For works like Roy Lichtenstein's and others that you see in our museum, there's art projects listed, biographies of the artist, and even core standards for the teachers to attach their lessons to. So one of the fun things we are often able to do at the museum is to work with you, with our community, children, parents, students, family members, we work with you to make works of art. And that's what you see here. The banner that is behind me is in dedication to the 19th Amendment. 2020 is the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote. On this banner, there's only about 28 words that you see that make up this amendment. But in that amendment, every woman was given that opportunity to take place in voting. So it changed things dramatically for the history of the United States. Each one of the letters in this banner was made by a different member of our community. Some people as young as eight years old and some women as old as 80 years old. Each one has a different color, different style, and with it a different story that ties into the person who made the letter. It's been a great opportunity to celebrate the 19th Amendment and also to get involved with people in the community and students just like you. Outside of the museum, we were looking at a banner that was a dedication to the 19th Amendment. That struggle for the right for women to vote began over 70 years earlier, and it began when this man was still alive. Do you recognize him? This is Abraham Lincoln. When I think of Abraham Lincoln, I think of a tall man, bearded, with a tall hat. Some of those things aren't here in this sculpture. This was made by Merrill Gage, and it was made from a plaster cast of Lincoln's face in 1860 when he was still alive. But at that time, he was a politician. We were on the brink of a great deal of strife and change in this country. And some of those trials, some of those challenges are written on this face. Look closely at his expression at the left side and the right side. You can see a mix of the joy and also some of the pain that he went through throughout his life. It is fascinating to be able to look at a sculpture, to look at a work of art that you can see from all sides. We're going to go into another gallery in our museum and visit with Luke where he will show you some other sculptures that we have on exhibit. Glad to see you all again. I'm here in front of one of my favorite artworks in this exhibition. It's a sculpture on a vegetable. Yes, this is a sculpture on a gourd. A gourd is a kind of squash. And it's a sculpture that's also painted, as you can see. So what we're going to do is we're not just going to look at the front where we have this tall person in white, but we're going to go all the way around to see what kind of story is being told. So let's get up close and take a very, very close look at what's happening. At the top here, it looks like we've got some cars and some cups all over the place, maybe with some grape juice and little wafers. And then towards the bottom in the middle, we see a lot of people all sitting down, but also very active. This woman in the red dress has her arms thrown up in the air. Oh, this woman in the, gray, in, the, in the blue skirt has her hair flying behind her. And I see a man in a red tie throwing his hands down. So everybody's sitting, but they're not sitting still. Let's keep going around. 
And guess what I notice? A piano. I wonder if there's music playing and maybe everybody's dancing in their seat. And I see a lot more people here, kind of arms thrown up, moving around, hair going all over the place. And the men are all wearing ties and the women all wearing nice dresses. It's making me think maybe they might be sitting on pews. It does look like that, long benches. I'm wondering if they're at church. And then I look up here and I see a building with a blue roof and it looks like some Bible scriptures on there. And I'm wondering if that's the church. It doesn't look like a boring sermon going on. It looks pretty active. I wonder if they are kind of dancing to music as they are sitting there. And as we keep going around, I see more and more people just dancing in their seats, having a good time. And now we're back to the front and we've got this tall lady here and she's got a Bible in one arm and in the other arm, she's got that very same church we saw in the back. This is Grandma Nettie. And Grandma Nettie is the artist's grandmother. And Grandma Nettie was the preacher at this church. Now, what kind of music do you think they were listening to while they're dancing in their seats? Probably something that was pretty energetic. Actually, the gourd tells us. We'll go back around and take a look. And on the back here, it says, Jesus on the main line, call him up. And guess what? That's a famous hymn. Would you like to hear it and see if all these people in the pews might be dancing to it? Let's take a listen. What did you think? Could you imagine everybody in their pews just dancing around listening to that joyous hymn? I really enjoy this gourd. I hope you enjoy it too and you see more of how music and art kind of come together. Thank you. And welcome to the Hughes Wing, our other section of the museum where we have exhibitions. And sometimes we have lots of different exhibitions, maybe two or three exhibitions, but right now we only have one and we opened up the whole space here for one exhibition of only women artists. And the exhibition title is She Persists. Come on in. Hi again. We are still in the She Persists exhibition and now I'm standing in front of a Wilmington favorite, Minnie Evans. Minnie Evans is a beloved folk artist and she is best known for her colorful, symmetrical and nature filled drawings. Minnie Evans is from Wilmington, North Carolina, and she didn't begin creating art until a little bit later in life. She had never gone to art school or gotten art lessons, and she decided to start drawing and painting based on visions and dreams that she began having on a regular basis. Initially, she started by creating artworks out of wax and crayon, and as her dreams got more vivid and her images got more colorful, she expanded to paints and colored pencils and anything at her disposal. As you can see, her artworks are both very colorful and also usually symmetrical, which means that it's the same on the left and the right. Now within Minnie Evans' creations, you can see all kinds of small examples if you get really close up. You can see faces, you can see flowers, you can see butterflies, small dots, and all kind of imaginative designs and shapes. Now when you get farther away from Minnie Evans's work, you might only notice the symmetry or the colors that pop out. But if you take the time, you can come up with a long list of all the details she has in her artwork. Minnie Evans got a lot of her nature inspiration from her job at Airly Gardens. For years, Minnie was the gatekeeper at Airly Gardens. So while she was working, she would also bring her art supplies and her paper and her canvas, and she would create artwork in between the visitors. Many people would purchase some of her artworks back then for as little as a dollar, and now her artworks are display all over the country. We have recreated the gatehouse that Minnie Evans once worked at at Airly Gardens. 
It now lives on the Cameron Art Museum's grounds, and September is going to tell us a bit more about that as well as some of our other outdoor sculptures. So if I asked you to think about an artist's studio, what would come to mind? What we are looking at here is basically the studio that Minnie Evans used to use when she would create her works of art. Inside we saw a few of her paintings that she did. This is a replica of the gatehouse where she worked at Early Gardens. Every day as she would come into work, she would have her papers, her crayons, and she would have time to create as she was watching people come through into the gardens. So think about those images that you saw. Maybe you remember the colorful flowers that were in there, along with the very interesting faces and uh, creatures that are part of her works of art. Those flowers, those beautiful colors, are part of what she would see every day at the gatehouse. This gatehouse, this is Minnie's studio, and we're able to share it with you here outside on the grounds at the Cameron Art Museum. To learn more about our programs, our classes, our in-person tours, and our virtual tours, please visit our website, www.cameronartmuseum.org. We would love to see you here soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.